All right, so throughout this demonstration, I want you to imagine that there's an object right there, something heavy, like a fridge or something. And there's two friends, this friend and this friend, and they're helping each other to move it. But they're not always super cooperative, right? You can see this person is applying force in this direction. And this person is applying force in that direction. So what's gonna happen uh, to our object? Well, it's not gonna move in the direction of the blue, it's not gonna move in the direction of the red, it's gonna move in that direction there. What these people are doing is adding their forces together, but not adding them in a single direction. We're adding two vectors together, and we know how to do that. We just take one of the vectors, tip to tail, and you can see that that tells us exactly what's gonna happen here. Um, it doesn't matter where our, our people are. So if I were to change the direction of this person, let's say this person wasn't very strong, then the vector would be moving in that direction right there. It also doesn't really matter which way I do that addition, right? So if I instead added the red one to the blue one, we're gonna, or the blue one to the red one, we get the same idea. So with two vectors, we can find the resultant easily enough tip to tail. But what if a third person came along? So in yellow is my third person, and you can see they're really pulling this uh, fridge in different directions. Can you picture what the resultant will be? Which way is this fridge going to move with three people pulling in those directions? Okay, well, let's find out. All right, so it looks like even though these three people are pulling in different directions, this fridge is gonna slowly inch its way in this direction. And of course, we can do the same thing we did before. To calculate that, we would just add one of the vectors to one of the other vectors, and then the third vector to the tip of that. And so what we've got is the blue vector plus the red vector plus the yellow vector makes this resultant vector right here. And again, we could say, no, 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 the, the person in red is much, much stronger. And that's where the fridge is gonna, well, that's where the fridge is gonna end up now, right? Blue plus red plus yellow. And again, it doesn't matter what order I add these up in. If we wanted to, we could do uh, blue plus yellow plus red. And you can see, doesn't matter what order we add these vectors up in, we're still gonna be calculating the resultant vector. Okay, now let's try to make the resultant as small as possible. Okay, not do it, that's not a good idea. Okay, let's make this red person very small. All right, and you can see that resultant is now, um, it's gone, I can't see it anywhere. That is what we're gonna call a triangle of forces. Now a triangle of forces happens when the object is in equilibrium. It's not all the forces on it add together to make zero, okay? We get a zero vector. Now, of course, you could have like 10 people pulling on this, but triangles of forces, three forces acting on a single object happen so often and are so useful that we talk about triangles of forces, three forces working on an object. We talk about this quite often. Now, I've set up a little bit of an equilibrium setup here. So if I get rid of uh, these ones here, and put this back where it was, and I click this equilibrium button, what my applet now is doing is I can move the blue one or the red one to wherever I want. And the purple one creates my third vector that allows this object to be in equilibrium. Uh, if that didn't make a lot of sense, what I'm saying here is that doesn't matter where I move the blue or the red, the purple compensates so that we get a triangle of forces, an object in equilibrium. Let's have a look. If I take this piece and I move it over to here, and I take this piece and move it over to here, you can see I get 
a triangle. And it doesn't matter where I move this red one to. If I place that purple one back where it was, I get a triangle again. So this object that I have right here will always be in equilibrium because that third vector, I've set it up so that it will always create an equilibrium. Okay, now what you need to take away from this is an ability to take three forces acting on an object and move them around like I've been moving around, but moving them around on like a pen and paper rather than doing it here on my little applet. Now this is not always easy, so watch carefully what's happening here. Uh, let's put some angles on this thing. All right, so you have 101 degrees, 122 degrees, and 136 degrees. Now, when you transform this from three vectors acting on an object into a triangle of forces, I want you to think about sliding. Okay, so I'm gonna take this one here and I'm gonna slide this blue vector, uh, this red vector along the blue vector up to the tip of it, All right? Sliding it up. Look at me sliding it up. Okay, keep sliding it up until I get to the tip. Okay, now stop there and think about the angles that are being made here. Boom, boom. If I extend this out like that, that angle there obviously corresponds with this yellow one here. 101, 101. That's not really the angle I'm interested in. The angle that I'm interested in is this one right here. And these are supplementary angles. So 101, 180, this one is 79 degrees. Knowing the internal angles of this triangle is gonna be super, super important. Now what I'm gonna do is take the red vector and the blue vector, and I'm gonna slide them up together. I know I'm leaving that angle behind, but I'll come back for it. I'm sliding the blue vector along the purple vector. Okay. Now, in the process of doing that slide, that angle didn't change. So that angle is still 79 degrees. Okay. What other angle can I grab hold of? It's this 122 degree angle here. This 122 degree angle here applies here. If I just extend this out, that is 122 degrees, which means that the internal angle of the triangle is 180 minus 122, which I hope is 58 degrees. And of course, now that I know that that's 58, and I know that that's 79. Some pretty simple maths is gonna figure that one out with me because the internal angles of a triangle are 180. 180 minus 58 minus 79. And I got my calculator out for that and I got 43 degrees right inside here. Boop. So now that I have that triangle, if I want to, I can pick the whole thing up I hope, move it over to here, get away from the, the three vectors moving this way and instead focus now on that triangle. A triangle with angles of 79, 58 and 43. And you can label that up and then you can do whatever you need to do with it. Um, it might be that you don't know one of the angles, it might be that you know two of the forces and you want to find the third force. It might be that you know um, two of the forces and one of the angles and you want to know one of the other forces. So all we're looking at here is the idea of a triangle of forces and the idea of going through a process of slides to create our triangle of forces. I'm just going to hit reset on this and I'm going to do it one more time so you can see my process of slides, my process of mental slides here. So let's move this blue one around to here somewhere, move this purple one, make it like much shorter maybe. Oh, I actually can't move the purple one. 
and move this one down here. Okay, how am I going to do this? It doesn't matter what order you do it in. Doesn't matter. You can do it in whatever order you want. Uh, maybe I'll slide the blue one first. So I'm going to slide the blue one along the red one. I could also move, slide the blue one along the purple one if I want to. Doesn't matter. You take it, slide it down. Okay. Now what what do I know here? You can see if that's 105, that's going to be the supplement of 105, which is 75. Okay, and now I'm going to take both of those pieces and I'm going to slide them along the purple one. That creates my triangle of forces and this 104 degree angle there becomes this 100 and oh, sorry becomes the supplement of that 180 minus 104 which is uh, 76 so that angle becomes 76 and I can pick up this entire triangle move it over somewhere else whoops I can pick up this entire triangle move it somewhere else and start working with it that way all right that's the triangle of forces Look at your angles, slide them along each other, and you'll get a good sense of what's going on there.